Hey there guys, what's happening and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're doing a complete recap of Code Lyoko, starting from the prequel and all the way to the oh-so-controversial Season 5. So without any further delay, let's get started. So the show revolves around a group of four middle schoolers and an AI girl named Aelita, known as the Lyoko Warriors, who are battling an evil virus named Xana. This villain is hell-bent on wiping out humanity, and his digital essence is tucked away inside this virtual world called Lyoko. Every week, he stirs up some real-world chaos that our young heroes have to tackle. Now, these kids aren't just doing all of this for the fun of it. They dash to an old deserted factory, which isn't just their secret base, but also their portal into Lyoko. And here's where things get interesting. When they dive into the computer world, everything morphs into the slick 3D animation. Their mission? To deactivate Xana's tower, because these towers are like power outlets for him to mess with the real world. And if any of our warriors lose their life points, they're zipped right back to Earth. Here's where Aelita steps up. She enters the tower, types in code Lyoko, and just like that, Xana's latest evil plan is put on ice. Then, with a hit of the reset button, or as they like to call it, a return to the past, everything rewinds by a day, and all is right with the world again. So that's your typical Code Lyoko episode in a nutshell. Now while it might seem like they're stuck in a bit of a loop, the show does shake things up a bit. It starts off with a bunch of standalone episodes, but as you dive deeper into the second season and beyond, things get all interconnected and serialized. Now before we move on to the actual seasons, Let's start things from the prequel Xana Awakens, where the whole story originates. Kicking off the two-episode prequel, we're first introduced to Jeremy, an absolute tech wizard at just 11 years old, who one day stumbles into this old abandoned factory. And what does he find? A supercomputer hiding a virtual world called Lyoko, and a pink-haired artificial intelligence named Maya, though she later remembers her name as Aelita. Aelita is totally clueless about why she's there, and this virtual world isn't just trees and lakes. It's also home to some evil creatures. She's kind of stuck there and needs help to figure things out. In a twist of fate, Jeremy encounters Odd, the new guy at Kadok Academy, who's all energetic and a bit of a prankster. He becomes roommates with Ulrich, who's trying to keep things cool with him, while simultaneously dodging the affections of Sissy, a girl at school who's really into him. Odd's dog Kiwi stirs up some chaos and things get even crazier when Jeremy's gadgets start going haywire after reactivating the supercomputer. Ulrich and Odd end up being thrust into this virtual world themselves trying to save Aelita from the nasty bugs and beasts discovering they've got some wild virtual powers and gear which mind you are pretty epic. Odd turns into a purple cat that shoots arrows and Ulrich is like a samurai. Meanwhile, in the real world, these random attacks from Xana start happening, involving electric ores and robot assaults. As if things weren't already upside down, Ulrich and Yumi, a girl who can legit hold her own in a martial arts duel, starts developing this adorable blush-inducing connection. Yumi gets pulled into the squad after a hair-raising encounter with an electric orb and joins them in Lyoko, slaying with her lethal fan. The crazy part? When they're in a pinch with the principal and Sissy due to her ratting them out, Jeremy discovers and activates this Return to the Past program. And suddenly, they've traveled one day back in time with only those who've been to Lyoko remembering everything that happened. Now here's what created the basis for all the seasons to come. They decide to keep the supercomputer on to figure out how to bring Aelita to the real world and to fend off Xana's attacks, which are linked to these odd red towers in Lyoko. So this group of kids embark on secret missions, zipping between the virtual and real world, battling monsters, and trying to figure out the mysteries of Lyoko. And that's all the backstory you need, guys. Moving on to Season 1, our brilliant Jeremy creates an impressive single-use materialization program in an episode called Cruel Dilemma. But the catch was, it wasn't completely polished until Odd, kind of accidentally, hit a few unknown keys, and voila, it somehow worked. Drama unfolds when Yumi takes an unexpected dive into the digital world, and since this version of the program can recover a body from there and it's their only shot, they decide to use it on her, bringing her back safely. So in another go at it, Jeremy decides to play it safe this time. He tries out a new materialization program using just one strand of Aelita's hair. 
Though it works, it glitches another program that basically means that if Ailita uses code Lyoko, she'll get deleted, and yep, the nightmare comes true. But no worries, the team had cloned her using that one successful materialized hair reviving her data. Fast forward a little, and things get a tad emotional between Jeremy and Ailita during more tests on materialization. A misunderstanding leads Jeremy to the land of Lyoko, leaving him stuck somewhere between the digital and the real world. Ailita, connected to his thoughts, performs a spectacular rescue, activating towers from different sectors and pulling Jeremy back to Earth before he can be erased from existence. And the episode Ghost Channel is its own kind of spooky. Odd, Yumi and Ulrich get trapped in a cunning virtual reality created by Xana, thinking they're back in the real world when they're actually not. Jeremy hops into the virtual world to see them, and Ailita shatters the illusionary world, saving the trio from Xana's treacherous trap. Finally, after some time, Jeremy nails the correct materialization program while Ailita is in the forest sector. But guess what? Monsters attack her, trying to foil her exit from Lyoko. Ulrich jumps in to help, and after an intense battle, Ailita materializes on Earth for the first time. The happiness is short-lived, though. Attempts to shut down the supercomputer cause Ailita to collapse. Why, you ask? Well, Jeremy finds out that Sneaky Xana injected a virus into her, tying their existences together. Put simply, if Xana goes down, then so does she. After a heart-pounding fight against monsters attacking Kadik, Ailita deactivates a tower, deciding to stay in Lyoko to safeguard against further attacks by Xana while also making quick visits to Earth. In Season 2, the gang discovers that if Xana wins or the supercomputer gets shut off, Ailita is toast. They uncover this hard truth, and Jeremy, the brains of the operation, is like, no way, we're not letting that happen, and he gets to work devising new strategies and vehicles to give them a fighting edge against Xana's freaky monsters. Here's why things get twisty. Ailita starts school on Earth, because hey, she can do that now thanks to some techy wizardry from Jeremy. But things aren't all homework and school trips. She starts having these super intense visions, leading her and the gang to an old eerie house, the Hermitage. And wouldn't you know it, it's a trap set up by Xana. They barely make it out, but this place sets Ailita on a path to finding a key to her past through an old toy named Mr. Puck, which feels kinda nostalgic, yet suspicious. Hmm. Moving along, they discover some old recordings from Franz Hopper, a guy with some serious ties to the supercomputer, and surprise, Ailita's past. Xana, being the menace that it is, attempts to erase this juicy info, sparking a new level of determination in our crew. But wait, there's a new sector in Lyoko. The gang, especially Ailita, faces even more danger from new monsters and a tentacle terror, the Skiffazoa, that's super into stealing memories. These adventures through digital woods and along virtual cliffs toss up a mix of bravery, close calls, and unexpected allies in the battle against their cyber enemy. Ailita has a particularly rough go, being the target and even getting possessed by Xana at one point via a cursed necklace. Yumi, another team member, also gets sucked into this virtual nightmare when her DNA code gets wiped, tethering her to Lyoko. The plot thickens when the kids encounter not one, but five activated towers on Lyoko, encountering an imposter Franz Hopper, unraveling more mysteries and facing betrayals. But the real Franz Hopper is out there, reaching out through scrambled signals and digital breadcrumbs. The curtain lifts to reveal a dramatic truth. Ailita is Franz's daughter. Rosanna's real goal surfaces, aiming to snatch the keys of Lyoko from Ailita to gain ultimate power and wreak havoc in the real world. In a heart-stopping showdown, Ailita gets her memories stolen by the Skiffazoa, dying and enabling Xana to break free. But Papa Hopper comes through, channeling his power to resurrect her and restore her memories. That's when she realizes that Franz Hopper is her father. Ailita and her friends, now fueled by a fiery resolve, vow to take down Xana no matter what it takes. It's them against the digital beast, and they're not backing down. Alright, in Season 3, the Lyoka Warriors are back in action. After chilling on summer vacation, they're thrust back into the digital chaos courtesy of our notorious rogue AI, Xana. 
This time, Zan is not playing games. It's aiming straight for the core of Lyoko, a colossal translucent sphere lurking in the hidden depths of Sector 5. Obliterate that and Lyoko is toast. So our heroes are back on the defensive, tirelessly thwarting Zena's persistent attempt to dismantle their digital playground. Now things get spicy when Zena develops a new trick up its virtual sleeve, the Code Zena. By activating a tower in the forest sector and slipping control into Aelita through the Skiffazoa, it sets a catastrophic chain in motion. Aelita, under Zena's influence, annihilates the sector using this dreaded code, but inadvertently also throws a wrench into Zena's plan to control humans. The same fate befalls the desert sector, with Ulrich desperately failing to halt the destruction. Then, after some saboteur antics involving a possessed Michael Rowley, the Lyoka warriors face a gut-wrenching decision to sacrifice the ice sector themselves, foreseeing the inescapable threat. The mountain sector, also decimated by our digitally haunted Aelita. Peeking into the team dynamics, we meet William, whose desire to become a Lyoka warrior isn't met with a unanimous joy. Despite his bravery against Xena's mind-controlled minions and a bomb-diffusing prowess, Yumi casts a suspicious and solitary no vote against his inclusion after a secretive team vote. However, necessity prevails with Lyoko's external sectors disintegrated, William's initiation into the team becomes inevitable, but Yumi's distrust proves insightful in a sinister twist of fate. In the last episode of the season, William, buzzing with eagerness, steps into the scanner, getting ready to make his mark in the digital world. But the digital realm isn't all fun and games, and our newbie gets a brutal reality check when he's ensnared and possessed by the Skiffazoa. An already critical situation turns dire as he ruthlessly dismantles the team and skewers the heart of Lyoko with his main weapons Viander, obliterating it, and by extension, Sector 5. Our warriors, dejected and Lyokoless, ponder their next moves, but wait, Jeremy gets a mysterious coded message, and it's a sign-off from Franz Hopper himself. So does this mean that there's hope to rebuild, retaliate, and perhaps revive William from his digital possession? And that's the cliffhanger we were left with. Season 4 continues right where we left off. After the core of Lyoko is destroyed, our gang is in a tight spot and needs to reconstruct the world of Lyoko to continue their quest through the web. Jeremy and Aelita pull it off and reconstruct one of the sectors after a grueling summer of hard work, but here's where it gets tricky. Their buddy William mysteriously returns, but it's all a shady setup by Xana aiming to capture and shut Aelita down. William is now under Xana's control permanently and rescuing him becomes another massive hurdle for the team. With Xana dispersed all over the internet, the gang needs a solid plan to tackle him directly. So Jeremy creates a virtual submarine called the Skid Blotnir to hunt Xana down on the network. Of course, Xana doesn't make it easy trying to obliterate the submarine before it's finished and snagging some crucial data to whip up William's own mini submarine, the Roracle. But despite the hurdles, the team is determined to navigate through the network, locate Xana, and bring William and another key player, Waldo Schaefer, back home. The gang, while on their virtual sea voyage, stumble upon a peculiar sphere. At first glance, it looks like Lyoko, but it's actually something else, a replica. Essentially, it's a duplicate of Lyoko, except instead of having four sectors, it's just packing one. These replicas are tucked away inside supercomputers, just like Lyoko, leading the team to venture into the real world as specters to annihilate supercomputers and thereby the replicas trying to make their virtual and real worlds a tad safer. Waldo Schaefer, aka Franz Hopper, who's kind of like the Phantom Guardian in all of this chaos, swoops in to save Aelita after she's flung into the digital sea and dishes out some valuable data to Jeremy before vanishing again. He doesn't reappear until the second last episode, delivering Jeremy data that could be the key to demolishing Xana once and for all. But every victory has its sacrifice, right? To unleash the multi-agent program which could obliterate the replicas and Xana, Franz steps in again. He gets permanently devirtualized, giving the program the boost it needs and essentially sacrificing himself. So yeah. Xana gets wiped out along with the replicas, but at the steep price of Waldo's own life. Quite the bittersweet victory for our virtual heroes. And there you have it.
a daring tale of virtual adventures, precarious challenges, and sacrifices in the digital and real world, entwining these young heroes in an epic saga against a malevolent virtual entity. Now, there isn't really a Season 5 of Code Lyoko, despite what some might think. What happened was that the creators rolled out a live-action sequel series called Code Lyoko Evolution. So while it does sometimes get mixed up as a new season, it's essential to note that this series kind of veers off from the original storyline and setting that we were used to. It jazzes things up with updated tech and drops your characters into scenarios set two years after all the drama of Season 4. So the season starts off strong with the Lyoko warriors Jeremy, Odd, Ulrich, Yumi and Aelita, who just got back to their regular school life at Kadok Academy after all the chaos and drama of virtual battles in the previous seasons. But of course, peace is short-lived when their old nemesis Xana makes a comeback. Even worse, it's now potentially more powerful than ever before. So our heroes must dive back into their secret double lives, balancing school and saving the world. They're not alone though. William Dunbar, once Xana's puppet, is now fully on their team. Plus, there's this new girl, Laura Godier. She's incredibly smart, but not always the most reliable ally. Together, the seven of them are on a mission. Figure out why Xana returned and put an end to its sinister plans once and for all. But there's another twist in the story. Aside from the notorious Xana, there's a new player in the game. Enter Lowell Tyron, a crazed scientist who, as it turns out, accidentally brought Xana back. And guess what? He's got his own virtual fighting force, the ninjas, who sport these slick black and green outfits. The plot thickens when Aelita's mom, Anthea, is discovered in Tyron's lab. The warriors are hell-bent on figuring out what she's doing there and how they can possibly bring her back to Aelita. The finale drops a bombshell on us. Tyron's been married to Anthea for four years, making him Ilea's stepdad. But here's something no one saw coming. It's not a love story. He's only married her to get his hands on her deceased husband's scientific archives, which he used to create the Cortex region. And who's secretly residing there, plotting world destruction? Yep, you guessed it, our old evil friend Xana. So the Lyoka Warriors decide they're going to take down the Cortex and halt Xana, even if it may cut Aelina's connection to her long-lost mom. On the other hand, Yumi tries to fool Tyron's goons using a GPS-tracked locket they gave Aelita. Aelita, meanwhile, is back in the virtual world with the gang, racing against time as Tyron's shutting down his supercomputer, which could essentially trap and doom them in the virtual abyss. Everything's falling apart. It's chaotic, and they barely escape. Back in the real world, Yumi is caught, and Tyron, with a grimace, orders the shutdown of his supercomputer. She fears the worst for her pals, but runs to the factory, only to find everybody safe. Phew. The team's plan semi-worked. The virus they launched will nuke Tyron's supercomputer once it reboots, unless he develops an antidote. Our heroes shut down their computer to prevent Xana from regaining power, pledging to face whatever comes next, united as one true fam, and thus leaving Xana temporarily in the dust. And that, my friends, is Code Lyoko in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed it, and if so, then do smash that like button and dive into our next video for more mind-blowing content.